well, I've been painting my whole life, but I've been painting professionally for about 20 years. I mean, I went to the Art Institute of Chicago um, for undergrad work, and after that I went to the Florence Academy of Art for more uh, specialized training in oil painting and drawing. Um, but I have two aunts that um, were art teachers and, um, and are still our art teachers for the um, public schools in Miami, Florida. And so as a child, that was a lot of fun because they could always put some crayons or paints or something in my hand. So pretty much my whole life, it kept me out of trouble, gave my hands something to do rather than <laughs> getting into trouble. Um, and I, I do not remember the first painting that I did. I mean, I, there's certainly things around the house that my you know, mother has saved from when I was a child. Um, one in particular, I guess I can think of, I think I was about eight years old, and it's a watercolor of a woman, uh, just a portrait of a, a woman with you know, a bow in her hair, the shoulders and a bust line. And I remember very clearly making the painting and saying to my aunts, how do you make a nose? How do you make a mouth? You know, and them showing me, you know, in that sort of a stylized way, this is how you make it look like a nose, and this is how you make it look like a mouth. So I think probably when I was about eight, it's maybe the first thing that I can remember. And I probably only remember because my mother had it framed. I mean, it's kind of big. It's like 18 by 24 or something. And my art and my painting has evolved a lot over time. When I was in high school, I went to what was at the time called the Performing and Visual Arts Center in Miami, Florida, which was half the day we went to um, high school and the other half a day we got to go to the community college and just take art classes for the rest of the day. When I was there, we got to do printmaking, we got to do painting and sort of, you know, they kind of just let us go and be free. There was nothing um, strict about the curriculum at all. And I would make furniture out of fabric pieces that I would find and wire and um, I would stitch together you know pieces of fabric and then paint on top of it and so when I started when I first started you know when I was maybe you know 16 really realizing like okay this is really something that I want to do it was much more experimental than what I'm doing now which is um, much more traditional so I started out like that, and then even through um, the Art Institute of Chicago, I was still doing stuff that was sort of wilder. But I sort of settled down into oil painting when I was at the Art Institute of Chicago. And towards the end, I realized, wow, you know, how much drawing has to do with painting. And graduated from the Art Institute of Chicago, and after a few years of working on my own, um, I realized that I was just working more and more from life, that I was working less from my head, less from found photos. I would find and collect a lot of um, a lot of old photos and work, you know, stitch paintings together from those things. Um, and I was painting more and more from life. I can't tell you why. Uh, maybe something in my eye socket just got like turned on all of a sudden and I just went wow look at all this stuff in front of me that's just completely amazing you know this is what I want to this is what I want to be painting so I realized that I couldn't draw well so I was trying to work from life but I didn't have the drawing ability which was quite upsetting because I thought I've been drawing and painting my whole life I graduated the Art Institute of Chicago I can't do a basic thing which is drawing. So I called the Art Institute of Chicago and I, I asked for a place. You know, I said I'd like to be in Europe um, and they directed me to the Florence Academy of Art which is a very strict program, very strictly academic. Um, you work in um, graphite, charcoal, charcoal and white chalk and um, oil paint. And you work many, many hours from the figure uh, each day. The students there are very devoted, so that's where I decided to go to kind of get back to the basics. I literally threw out my paintbrushes. I think I was maybe 26 years old. I decided I'm not going to paint again until I know how to draw. I was there for, you know, I went through the program, three-year program. I graduated and then I stayed. I was hired as an instructor and I stayed for five more years to teach. So I was there total eight years. And during that time, 
as my drawing abilities improved, certainly my work changed, the, the way that my work changed, look changed. So it evolved then in that way. Since I left Florence in 2004, um, and I've been working not in a studio with other people doing academic work, and also, you know, your peers kind of looking over your shoulder, and of course my, you know, my teacher is there, even though I'm not really a student anymore. Um, I think that that can, it's not for everybody, but for me, probably inhibited um, my just branching out a little bit and maybe taking more risk in my work. Since I've left there, um, and I've been in um, Providence and Rhode Island and Massachusetts, living in this area. The work is still rooted in um, a tradition and in classical, a classical style, um, meaning that I still very much believe in um, a harmony in the work and a sense of you know, proportion, um, composition, that those things are the most important to me in the work. I think that it has changed quite a bit. I've probably done some pieces that um, I probably wouldn't have done before. I think the most challenging thing about being an artist is integrating being an artist with being a normal person. And you want to do your art and you're living in that world in your mind and you have to be a hundred percent there in order to make the work that you're making but you also have relationships with people you also have commitments you can't be living out on the street you can't you know you need food in your refrigerator sometimes the somehow the food has to get from the grocery store to your refrigerator which for lots of people is like a really normal everyday thing but you have to take time to do that and to fit it in somewhere and when you're at the grocery store maybe you see something and you go oh my god peaches i have to pay i have to paint peaches you know, you have to finish your grocery shopping <laughs> and get everything and then bring it home, you know. So I think that that's the most challenging thing is figuring out how to get all of that to flow together because you're never not an artist, but somehow it has to be suppressed a little bit so that you can get all this other stuff done. It's, um, I don't, it's really hard to do it completely on your own if you don't have a partner or a parent <laughs> or somebody somebody some kind of manager even somebody that you pay somebody that kind of helps you hold it all together you know remember to deposit that check that you got oh yeah okay I'll remember to deposit it. oh thank you because I would not have done that for three more weeks you know that really helps I think artists I think probably every artist would agree when they helps us hold it together because um, that stuff becomes really unimportant. Like I said, you have to be 100% there and that really means driving everything else out of your mind. So um, the most rewarding part of being an artist is when someone acquires a piece of your work and they talk to you about it and they say something that was just what you were thinking when you made it. Because you know that your intention was fulfilled and it's going to be with someone that is going to sincerely be touched by it the way that you wanted them to. You said something and somebody heard it. And each each painting is a different story. Each painting is a different thing, even though we have the same, you know, there might be things that for years or for a lifetime that we work on certain themes, but each painting is simply an idea of that theme. And it just makes you feel like you're not talking to a blank wall when someone appreciates and says something that you go, wow, that's just what I was, that's, that was it.